Welcome to the Hudson Show. Coming up, one thing experts warn you shouldn't dump in your toilet. Also, have you ever suffered from boyfriend blindness? All that and more on the way next. Funny, uh, flying has gotten such a horrible, horrible, um, uh, uh, what is the word I'm looking for? Connotation? Sure. Okay. Yeah. I that's definitely sure wasn't it. Going, definitely so. not it, but we'll work with that. <laughs> uh, flying has gotten a horrible reputation. reputation. That's what I was looking for. Okay. Um, and it's odd because I've, I haven't flown a ton, but I haven't had that many bad experiences flying. Mm-hmm. But I understand. The, uh, I've seen enough bad stories. I know why it has such a bad reputation. So then it's nice to every once in a while see when the occasional good thing happens <laughs> on a flight. Where at least... As, as much as I haven't had a bad experience flying very rare, often, um, it's also very rare that like flying is exciting and, and like you have a great time doing it. Mm-hmm. It's just a chore. Um, but this guy actually made everyone's lives a little better in the midst of a bad situation. A United Airlines pilot, they're calling him the pizza pilot. His name is Scott Wardle after uh, he went ahead and bought 150. Is this right? 155? Pizzas. He bought thirty pizzas. Thirty pizzas. To Where did feed I see one hundred and fifty-five passengers? Okay. Yeah. I guess that'd be one hundred fifty-five pizzas for that many people. It'd be too many. Yeah. Right. <laughs> but basically, this is the pilot of this flight, this United Airlines flight that was um, going to be en route to their destination, and they ended up having to ground because there was a medical emergency. Mm-hmm. So they landed in Albuquerque at like eleven p.m., which is right when their food court shut down, mm-hmm. and so. The pilot was kind of like, okay, what do we do? And so he just decided to order 30 pizzas for everybody. Like, what a guy. And yeah. I, I, lo- I also love the nickname that everyone gave him. Pizza pilot. That is, I, I love everything about this. The only thing I worry about is the person who had the medical emergency. Imagine they had to get carted away in an ambulance or something like that. Yeah. And then they're seeing this story later. Like, <laughs> everybody got pizza. Except, Except for, for me. me. <laughs> I just had to go to the hospital. Yeah, it I, adds, it literally adds insult to injury in that case. <laughs> I think the person is OK. They just it was a situation where they passed out. Um, mm. But they they had like nurses on the flight, a doctor on the flight, and they were just worried that they weren't going to be able to get it under control. So they decided to, you know, ground the flight. Maybe the pilot just wanted pizza. He's like, oh, no, a medical emergency. Oh. We better get down in Albuquerque <laughs> quickly. <laughs> Uh, it could be the case. That's probably, I would be, if I was a pilot, I'd be looking for any excuse to delay everybody so we could have pizza. Uh, I mean, sure. <laughs> uh, I, I could see that happening, but uh, yeah, you could be the pizza pilot, like the serial pizza pilot. And yeah. it's like, he strikes again. Yeah. He what grounds is, another plane. Yeah. <laughs> I really wish we could just get where we're going on time, but I do <laughs> love this pizza. <laughs> it feels to me that we've been sprinting away. For many traditional marriage traditions over the past <laughs> uh, several years where the standard wedding that, you know, you'd go through bachelor, bachelorette party, uh, maybe an engagement party. Then you have like a wedding in a church and everybody's dressed in nice clothes and that and then uh, honeymoon, whatever. That is uh, like more and more. We're like, well, how can we switch things up? Mm-hmm. The latest on the chopping block, the latest classic wedding tradition Seems to be the bachelorette party where, um, at least according to brides.com, many (laughs) women are now instead choosing to do the, what they say, call (laughs) what they call the solo ret (laughs) party instead. Did you come up with that? No, I did not. (laughs) The solo ret party, which instead uh, eschews the idea of partying with a bunch of your gal friends and instead... Uh, involves you as the bachelorette just going on a solo vacation uh, to try to de-stress, collect your thoughts, and uh, just prepare yourself in that way for getting married instead of the bachelorette party and all that comes with that. Um, What do you think of solo rat versus bachelorette idea? So I don't inherently think it's a terrible idea. Mm -hmm. Uh, I will say I've had so many fun experiences, not with my own bachelorette party because I'm not married, but Mm -hmm. 
going to friends' bachelorette parties. I've had several close friends that have gotten married, and we have such a good time with each other, supporting one another. We don't do a lot of the, I guess, traditional stuff that is considered to be bachelorette party, like going out and partying or mm-hmm. something like that. Throwing up in the streets of Nashville. <laughs> yeah, we don't, we don't really do that type of stuff. We do get get our group of friends together that are all from college and we're all in different places. So it is true that it can get expensive. There's Mm -hmm. plane tickets involved and all of that. That is absolutely true. So I see the appeal in this because of how expensive bachelorette parties have become. But I do think it's such a vital like experience with your friends and with uh, oftentimes your bridesmaids. And so I, I don't know. I, I would hate to see it completely go. But mm-hmm. what my thought is, why can't we have both of these things? What do you mean? You want to add another expense for everybody? No. <laughs> what I'm thinking is... How awesome would it be for you to have like your bachelorette party, Uh you know, maybe like a couple weeks before the wedding and then like the weekend before you go on a little solo trip because I go on solo trips all the time. Yeah. And it is very like uh, helpful to help, you know, focus your brain or, you know, uh, clear your thoughts out a little bit, especially if you go out in nature. Mm -hmm. So I get that aspect a lot and I do think that's appealing. So especially before your wedding, because weddings are stressful. So I could see how that could be a fun de-stressing thing to do. You would have to do it if, if you are going to go that route, you've got to be as the bachelorette you arrive, maybe you arrive a few days early yeah. than everybody else. You definitely don't want to be the one staying like, stay hey, late. we're having the bachelorette party <laughs> and then I'm having a solo rep the couple days after. <laughs> that sounds like you're just going to kick some, everybody out. <laughs> yeah. And you're going to be sad. You're going to be like, I remember when we were having fun together. <laughs> oh, yeah. You're just sitting in your hotel room. Um, I, uh, I Here's my thing. I think because traditionally, right, bachelor, bachelorette parties. Uh, it's like the the wedding party. Your mm-hmm. your your guys or your groomsmen or your uh, whatever bridesmaids. You, bridesmaids. They're the ones paying for the trip, right? Yeah. Or for whatever the party is. Yeah. Um. So for me, if I ever get to be invited to be a best man, <laughs> or groomsman, I should be able to. If I'm paying for your trip and your fun, I should be able to be involved in the fun. You want me to fund you a solo trip? How good of friends do you think we are? How much money do you think I have? I better get some fun out of this, too. My assumption would be if it's a solo trip, the, the groomsmen or the bridesmaids are not paying for it. Well, then what's... I mean, then sure. Then <laughs> do whatever you want with your own money before your own wedding. Go take... A, and we also have to factor in how much vacation time do we think everybody has? Right. You're already like taking time off for your wedding and honeymoon and then, uh, bachelor, and then like now you're adding a solo trip in as well. Um, I see the marriage, you know, you know, me, I love solo stuff, <laughs> but this, I don't know if this is a hundred percent where I think it's the best use of being solo. Fair enough. The NBA, uh, apparently according to the numbers, l- the ratings not looking very good so far for the 2024, 2025 season. Uh, commissioner Adam Silver was grilled about that in a recent interview. He says that, uh, so far, we're only looking at a couple weeks of ratings, so nobody should panic, and you have to take into account, he says, this year, we are up against a World Series. You had a presidential election that was commanding an enormous amount of attention, so I don't think it has anything to do whatsoever with the style of play on the floor. Uh, producer, or, Ali, you are the <laughs> an NBA fan. Mm-hmm. Do you buy it? Uh, Not entirely. Uh, I think it's been a problem with the NBA for a while. I know you are a big believer in the NBA regular season is unwatchable. Yeah. I don't know if I'd go that far, but I will say there are there are valid complaints that people do have, including things like uh, load management that we're seeing right now with some of the biggest stars like Joel Embiid, who's Mm -hmm. played in only a few games for the 76ers. Not only has that been not a great product to watch, but also it's been a struggle for so many teams because they are not playing well because Mm -hmm. their stars aren't playing. And so in the Eastern Conference specifically, there are only four teams that have a record over 500 right now. Yeah, it's you know, it's early in the season. So it's kind of weird when you first start out where you do have some strange records yeah. for good teams. There can be an imbalance. Yeah, but but that is still quite quite a bad sign for what we're seeing with a lot of 
uh, injuries, which you can't control that, mm-hmm. uh, but also some load management problems, which is it's just going to be a problem in the NBA probably until they realize that they need to either shorten the season or place some really hard uh, rules in place, which they have tried yeah. uh, to, to stop that. Yeah, I think... Uh I, you know, you said unwatchable. I don't think it's unwatchable if I'm flipping through and I really have nothing else. You but I'm, said that. Those I'm are never your going words. to. I'm never going to make a point to watch any regular season NBA game. <laughs> I'd rather watch a WNBA game with Caitlin Clark because I just don't even know. I, is this important? I don't know. The NBA, I know it's not important. Um, and they've tried to fool people with the NBA Cup into thinking that something important's happening. It's not. The season is too long. And then the players even know, right? And the teams. Like, why is Joel Embiid sitting out? One, because he doesn't want to get injured. Mm -hmm. But two, because they know that it doesn't really matter even what your seed is in the playoffs. It doesn't really matter. You've had some of the great teams being like, whatever, we'll be the fifth seed because we'll just know we can turn it on in the playoffs. But that all that adds up to say, even if the players and the teams know the season is meaningless, then all of us as fans kind of do, too. And so why would we waste our time? Plus, yeah, they make it so expensive for you, too. You need so many subscriptions to be able to watch if you have a team you like to follow. Mm-hmm. Um, and the the games are expensive to actually attend if you want to go. Too, too much for the average fan. And it all adds up to just uh, make you just want to wait for the playoffs to come around. <laughs> Well, and that is a struggle, too, because the playoffs don't start till April. Yeah. And so for many people, they don't even watch until the All-Star break. Mm-hmm. Like, they, they just kind of ignore the NBA until the NFL season's over. Yep. So, it, yeah, that's going to be a hurdle for them every every time. So yeah. I think these excuses are a little bit lame from the commissioner, not going to lie. Yeah. Uh, it's <laughs> ignoring reality for sure. But but as an NBA fan, I will still be watching the regular and season. the last thing... I- I will say is that all of these criticisms stand for every, uh, they stand for NHL. I'm an NHL fan. I don't watch many regular season games, although that's the only time I get to see my Sabres play. So <laughs> for them, yeah, but uh, they stand for the NHL. They, have, they play the exact same amount of games. It's just as much too many, but at least their players tend to actually show up for the games. Um, and obviously for the MLB, which has even more games, mm-hmm. um, it, yeah, the, all the criticism stand, although the NBA definitely has more of a problem with players sitting out than any other sport. Yeah. Um, the NFL, though, 17, feels like just right. Christmas is here. You know it's here because we have Little Debbie Christmas treats. We've got the two new things that they have out for the holidays, and that is the uh, Little Debbie Christmas Tree Cake Donuts. Which I have, I have one here in my hand, and then we also have the uh, the new buttery vanilla Christmas mini muffins. When I think of Ooh. Christmas, I think of buttery vanilla, and so that is what we are trying today <laughs> on the Hudson Show for the food fight. Which would you like to eat first? Since we have the donuts out, let's go ahead and do the donuts. Let's do the donuts first. The Christmas tree cake donuts from Little Debbie. Obviously, Christmas tree cakes are amazing. Can these meet that standard? <laughs> hmm. Different texture, definitely different. Yeah. Experience. Um, <laughs> here's the problem with these: that you literally do compare them to a Christmas tree cake, and can anything be as good as Little Debbie Christmas tree cake? Yeah, I think it's good, but it's definitely not like it's not going to beat it. No. If you were given, let's be realistic. Anytime you walk into the store. You're going to see those, the Christmas tree cake donuts from Little Debbie, but you're also going to see tr- Christmas tree cakes. And after you've had both, you're going to pick the actual Christmas tree cake. <laughs> there, you'd be a fool not to. Um, let me wash this down with some hot chocolate. Oh, that's good. Okay. Uh, open up one of them. Open up one of them muffins. Yeah, let's do a little ASMR. <laughs> <laughs> Opening up the bag. All righty. Mm, it's all ruffly. Do but I need the to actual, give you one? Uh, yeah, let me... Let me stick my fingers in the <laughs> this muffin bag here. Um, I've heard very good things about these. These look very fluffy. Oh, they smell. They smell. Mm. Doesn't this smell? Smells good. It smells like a Yankee candle, <laughs> which I guess could be bad, but it smells good. Okay. It smells like a good candle. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yep. Love that. Tastes like a good muffin. 
Would you take these over any of the other Little Debbie mini muffins? I don't really eat the mini muffins. Do they? They have a blueberry muffin, right? Yeah, yeah. I'm sure they do. I think that's the only one that I've ever really tried before, and I I thought that was good because I I do love blueberry muffins. But mm. yeah, this tastes good. These are good. Good flavor. They're festive. The the green yeah. and red sprinkles, mm-hmm. and they just are a texture that shouldn't occur in real life. <laughs> like nothing in actual nature tastes. Is- Feels like a mini muffin does in your mouth, <laughs> but it's such a good feeling. You could eat those. You wouldn't need to have teeth to eat those, <laughs> even though they are solid. And I love that about them. The thought that came into my brain, I just don't want it. I don't want it. <laughs> I, want, I want more of those mini muffins. Um, the Christmas tree cake donuts, I think I can take them or leave them. But the mini muffins, uh, those are those are good. Those are a uh, uh, Hudson approved anyways. Yep, we approve. Uh, festive holiday treat and uh, the perfect thing to eat while you listen to the Radio U Christmas channel, which is now streaming for free. The Radio U app, the Radio U.com, the Radio U Roku channel, the Radio U Alexa skill. You'll hear uh, more from Allie and I on there. We've reached that time of year. One where the Radio U Christmas channel is here. Launched today. You can go find it in the Radio U app or Radio U.com. Also coming with the Christmas Channel comes all of the dictionary words of the year. The dictionary employees are just licking their chops. <laughs> They've been waiting all the different competing dictionaries for their chance to name their word of the year. And so uh, yesterday, Cambridge Dictionary decided what their word of the year for 2024 is. They say it's manifest, mm. not the Canadian musician we play here on Radio U, but spelled with an I. Mm-hmm. Which traditionally would mean easily noticed or obvious. Can you use manifest in that way in a sentence? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you threw me off there. Um, I'm, I, no? I, I'm just, okay. Or, you can't do this to me. <laughs> or uh, as a noun in this case, that would be an adjective. But um, as most people would know it in 2024, it's been being used as a noun. Um, or I would have thought a verb. Which, like, it's to, mm, yeah. to, um, You're trying to imagine manifest. achieving something that you want and the belief in doing so will make it more likely to happen. Yeah. That's a verb, isn't it? Yeah. I like mean, I've, I'm going to manifest it. Yeah. But I guess they included the whole to manifest something. Ah. So that changes it a little bit. But yeah, I would assume most people using it this as the new mm-hmm. slang term of manifesting something, yeah. would be using it Probably more verb-like. Not as the adjective version, since you couldn't even use that in a sentence. No, apparently not. <laughs> I'm like, wait, my brain is not ready to do that today. And, you know, construct a sentence. Mm-hmm. It's like uh, when you're in a spelling bee. Can you use that word in a sentence, yes, please? Yes, <laughs> that's exactly what I was hoping for. Uh, so you would have gotten that little uh, that little ding sound. Well, please pre-warn me next yeah. time. Um, <laughs> I just thought you were smart enough to be able to just I thought you used that in your normal vocabulary tell me this is manifest a good selection for word of the year um I I don't think there's any reason why it's not a good selection I mean it's definitely one that I've heard a lot I've heard a lot of people saying it and say even celebrities have been endorsing uh, endorsing manifest (laughs) which is such a weird way to put it I'm Dua Lipa and I endorse the word manifest Uh, that's not what they've been doing, but they've been saying it. Maybe they've been the, like, I'm going to manifest whatever. So. Right. Maybe the dictionaries need to start putting that in the definitions. Like when they, uh, select the word of the year, like uh-huh. this was endorsed by so-and-so <laughs> yes. and so-and-so. I, we heard earlier this year, it was Charlie XCX is brat. Uh, brat. I was going to, I couldn't remember what the word was or what the dictionary was that uh, said that. I can't remember the dictionary either. It wasn't Merriam Webster because no. they're usually the last to announce Oxford? Theirs. Was it Oxford? Oh, yes. It was yeah, Oxford. That's yeah. the big three yeah. right there is Cambridge, Merriam Webster, and uh, Oxford. Oxford. Yeah. And they said brat yeah. was the word of the year. And this is why Oxford slowly and surely dropping out of that big three <laughs> and becoming it's really a big slowly two. becoming a yeah, big two. <laughs> Uh, the conference realignment of, it's SEC and Big Ten right of here. dictionaries <laughs> by the choices they've made. Uh, so let's get out there and let's manifest a good day. What is one unsolved mystery you wish we had the answers to and many good, many good choices coming in? John from Texas said John Benet Ramsey. Oh. Mic drop. 
That that really is a mic drop one. I mean, talk about one that absolutely enraptured the whole country and beyond that too. So yeah, that's a good pick. What uh, what is the the brief version of John Benet Ramsey? Like that was a little child, right? John Benet Ramsey was, I believe, I. I want to say she may have been like eight years old, but she was killed in her family home Mm -hmm. and we never really figured out who killed her and and what exactly happened. There was this weird ransom note and then the the parents ended up finding her in the basement dead. Like it's very strange. All the details are very odd. Mm -hmm. Some say the parents did it. Some say the brother, like it's all very confusing. Some say someone broke in, you know, so it's, it's, uh, it's going to be probably one that we may never know the answers for. She was six years old it when she seems, was found I mean, murdered. how long has it been? I feel like that's one where we just won't, we'll never get it, will it, we? It was the day after Christmas, 1996. Mm, maybe, maybe one day. <laughs> uh, Chad, Chad got in with one that was on the top of my mind, and that is the D.B. Cooper uh, plane mm. robbery in the Pacific Northwest. Uh, it's funny you mentioned that, Chad, because that is the reason this entire thing came up. Yep. D.B. Cooper <laughs> Day is coming up on Sunday. And D.B. Cooper is a guy, if you don't know the the, the mystery behind that, this one uh, took place in 1971. It's a guy, a mystery man, even though he's been called Dan Cooper or D.B. Cooper, he hijacked a plane going from Portland to Seattle and parachuted off of it. Uh, but once he parachuted off, he disappeared. Like nobody's seen him since nobody has not been found. If you look up DB Cooper, you'd see a picture of him that you probably seen before a sketch, a sketch. Yep. Yeah. Not an actual picture. Yeah. Uh, but th- I think there's, co- you know, there's been theories that have come out over the years or where there's been like a break in the case. We think we know who did it, but I don't know at this point, since it's been so long, if you can actually truly know. Mm, yeah. D came in with one. She said the UFO incident from Aurora, Texas. Is there really an alien pilot buried in the cemetery? Ooh. Oh, that's a good one. Lindsay says the OG. This is true. Mm. Jack the Ripper. I kind of forgot about that, but that yeah. that really is the OG unsolved case. And you want to talk about one that's just too old to really ever be solved. Yeah. Um, I don't know when that exactly took place. I don't know if it was like the 50s or no, like no, no. the 1700s, but <laughs> it was a long time ago. <laughs> I'm just 50s. not good at judging time before I was born. <laughs> no, it was in like the late 1800s in England. So, yeah, it's yeah. Uh, it's been too long is all I know. Uh, Christy says, I... Uh, oh, this is a good one. This is uh, local for the mm. uh, for Radio U Columbus, and that is Brian Schaefer. Mm. He disappeared... Um, at what I believe is right near, if you're a Radio U Columbus listener, you would know the Newport Music Hall. Yeah, I think is the Newport where he walked in. He was seen on the roof of whatever bar it was by there, and then never was seen leaving. Yep, and nobody knows where he went. No one knows what happened to Brian. Yeah, that is that's one that hits close to home, obviously, but more recent as well. It happened in 2006. Mm-hmm. So yeah, that is definitely an unsolved mystery where it's like, what in the world happened there? So that's a good one. There's another one that that brings me to mine, which is another. You know, I feel like ones that are local to you or places you know hit a little harder. And there's a guy named Tyler. This is probably less well known nationally. But Tyler Davis is a guy who I just saw a video on not long ago. They just it's just been five years since he disappeared at the Easton Mall in Columbus area uh, where he was having a night with his wife and one of their friends. He was drinking what they were. His wife and the friend went back to the hotel. He starts walking away from the hotel. He was on the phone with them the whole time. I like, kept calling him whatever. They have phone records. And then all of a sudden the phone like he's not where his phone was mm. uh, and they just do not know where he disappeared to. So that that's another good one. Crazy. I don't think I've heard of that one. Another uh, mystery rabbit hole to go down. Yeah. Test I'm, all the theories. I might need to go down that rabbit hole. For me, mine, mine is quite an older one. Um, not quite as old as Jack the Ripper, but <laughs> uh, from 1947 in Hollywood, it's the Black Dahlia murder. That's a classic. Elizabeth Short. That one has always enthralled me. I've always wanted to know the answer, but I will be, I will say I am surprised no one chose as, as of right now, mm-hmm. no Texas come in for this one no one said zodiac killer Mm. no one picked that one yeah i was kind of shocked that seems like one that a lot of people have been pretty interested in for a while too one of the classic mysteries that we will yeah so many and i don't know it would kind of ruin the fun to get the answers though for some of these (laughs) you know like you want to know 
But then once you know, I don't know if you do. Allie, I'd like you to meet Nikki. Nikki, <laughs> Allie. <laughs> Allie, Allie, yay! <laughs> Allie uh, and I know each other. Yes. Yeah. Um, oh, how did you meet? Uh, no, so, Allie, I don't know if you know this about Nikki, uh, because I know you know her. But uh, do you know that Nikki... <laughs> Like one of her top interests is bears. I did not know this. Well, Nikki, well, anytime there's a should... bear story, we have to we have to send it to Nikki. <laughs> now that you're in that position, Allie, you need to pick an animal that you also love and adore and want to cuddle and have a very berry experience of your own. <laughs> and so you can't have bears, but you gotta pick another animal and then anytime that comes in the news, everybody sends you the articles about them. <laughs> It is a great, yeah, really great bit to have. Yeah, I got to It's not a bit something. for Nikki. It's real. She <laughs> really does like bears as much. I uh, do. I want a bear so bad. It's fine. <laughs> and it's gotten to the point where not only do I send all, does Nikki have to see all the bear stories? Now I have a story about people pretending to be a bear. <laughs> I thought Nikki had to be in a, have you seen this video, Nikki? Um, it's I from did. California. <laughs> of course you did. Uh, you didn't need me to send it to you. Of this guy, uh, this th four guys in California have been caught um, and found that they were uh, committing insurance fraud. What their plan was is one of them dressed up in a bear suit, a fake bear suit, and broke into a Rolls Royce and like tore up the seats and all the up uh, upholstery, I guess, whatever. Yeah. And they tried to get the insurance check for it. Um, but the problem was it, as if it was an actual bear, uh, invasion, but it wasn't because it was just these guys in a bear suit. Well, when you watch the video, if you're a, um, a bear person like me, you can tell it's not real right away. <laughs> it's too skinny and like, it's got a human form and a bear shape. But then when you start reading, it's like, oh, it's a, it's a ghost. It's a Rolls Royce ghost. And they wanted the insurance money for it. So they wanted to pretend like a bear had broken in so that they can claim on it. So it's like a very clever plan. I just would have thought they would have put more money into the actual bear suit uh -huh. because it looks mangy and just like it's not luxurious bear hair. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know. I think like if you want to get insurance fraud, you got to put some money into your plan. Yeah, tell them <laughs> how to do it, Nikki. <laughs> They should have bought something a little bit more high quality. So like kudos on the plan, but just poor execution. You, you got to spend money to make money, whether it's <laughs> yeah. an actual business or insurance fraud, either way. Yeah. So Allie, you got to still pick your animal. So then like, you know, like what's your favorite animal? Do you have one? Probably cats. No, you got to go exotic. A I know. You're going to get... I do like... I do like in the cat family... I do love leopards, any type of leopard. Ooh, like snow okay. leopards. So it'd be like, yeah, like, look, the snow leopard broke into my car. <laughs> yeah. And you're like, I didn't know that we still have snow leopards. And it's like, yes, it broke in. You want to have a really nice um, suit that you bought, uh, probably made of real kitty hair. And uh, then you could actually be believable. If you want right. it to, to look believable. Or Nikki, did you think this? What if they just parked the car where it wasn't in view of a camera and then just did everything they did to the car out of range where there's no evidence except for what's in the car? And then you could go, it was a bear. It must have been a bear. There's no now way that's to good prove, thinking. but mm -hmm. they did it on no, camera. I think, though... You had to have video proof because it's a it's a Rolls Royce. Like it's very expensive. So mm. they they just didn't don't think they want that car anymore. They needed money. Yeah. They needed to get out of it. And when you want to get out of your car thing, you're desperate, right? <laughs> yes. Yeah. When you when you've sunk that much money into a Rolls Royce, mm. I guess you're probably you, you're ready for the next big thing. So was there but no if you've way? not yet watched the video, look it up because it's good. <laughs> well, I love that they discovered it. The the they searched the people's houses too and found the bear suit. Like the they bear did, suit. Did, <laughs> as if they were going to like do it again or like I don't know. Maybe they were waiting for Halloween. I don't know, but they could have just discarded of it and at least left something to mystery. But right. they, the evidence was right there in front of everyone. I feel like we shouldn't we shouldn't throw stones anymore. I mean, we don't know what we would do in that situation, but obviously <laughs> they had a good idea. But again, their execution of it, even throwing away the bear costume, like they just didn't think it all through. So it, it didn't work. We are back with Nikki doing our um, occasional bear roundup of what's been going on in the world of bears with Nikki. <laughs>
It does feel like you need to do a monthly check-in. So you store up all these stories and then you check in with me. Yeah. Well, then I'd only get to talk to you once a month. That's not enough. (laughs) About bears. I know. I know. Just save all the good stories. We're going to need the bears to do more things so we can check in more frequently. Um, I have a bear and I guarantee that you've seen this on your TikTok already. But But do you know why? Why is that? Because again, every so time well? I see, no, I see Chattanooga, I see you <laughs> or Gatlinburg. It's Gatlinburg, right? Yes. So like anytime I think Gatlinburg, Hudson's gone there many times. I assumed you've seen this candy shop. I, well, so here's what happened. It's a video and many people may have seen this by now because it's gone viral. It's a bear that wandered in to a candy shop in Gatlinburg, Tennessee, and it's just eating up the candy in there, <laughs> refuses to leave. And Goals. so I totally was, I was, I was watching not because of the bear, but I was like, I wonder where this candy store is. Have I been inside or do I at least know where it is in relation to, in my experience of, of life? And I don't recognize it. But then again, I feel like they there. all kind of look the same. All the candy stores. Yeah. Well, I mean, if you ever been in a, you know, to Gatlinburg and all that area throughout the the Berg. Um, so <laughs> bears are around there quite often and they'll walk in like the shops and stuff. But Allie, I'm not sure if you've been there, this bear, he walks in. And so he'll just stick his nose. Like he's just eating candy. So he, it's one of those things where you can scoop candy out of the, the little plastic bins. And I was thinking, are they taking note as to which bin gets the candy eaten out of it? Cause surely they got to clean it out. Yeah, they got to right. take that candy or is the whole store have to get cleaned mm. um, with, you know, removing the candy. Cause the bear really, really got some candy. Like he did a number in there. Oh, I didn't think of that. The that, FDA going to come in and be like, this candy cannot be eaten anymore. Yeah. How close can you, can't. can you sell? How close proximity can candy be to bears before you have to throw it away? <laughs> Well, for me, that's a bonus, and suddenly I'm buying candy, but <laughs> for like, everybody I else, I don't that. think. <laughs> I'll eat it. I'll take it. Okay, extra just to simply have for ga- the bear game bear used candy. Um, <laughs> if, you're, if you're curious, it seems that the bear had a preference for Charleston Chews and Hershey Kisses. Ooh. Oh, ew on the first one, yeah. but okay on the second one. Yeah, the second yeah. one is good, I guess. Wait. Uh, now, Ali, this is your job here. You got to look up this research. We got to only provide the right information. Is a bear like a dog? Can they have chocolate or does a chocolate kill a bear? Can bears have chocolate? I'm asking Google right now. <laughs> <laughs> and see, Ali, the best thing about this with this job is now your boss gets to see like it'll probably get a spit out report of like, oh, what was uh, the Hudson show searching this morning? What important things? And this is what you're searching now. Yeah, right. <laughs> Number one thing it says, no, bears should not have chocolate because it can be toxic and even fatal to them. Whoa. So well, then the, the police should have given that, uh, what's the word from Family Guy? The epithet or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> they got to save the bear. Would it be Ipecac or is it that, um, what's that stuff you eat? Like the charcoal that like soaks up what's in your That's stomach. That's for an overdose. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you overdosed on chocolate. Hudson, that's for like in the hospital. That's not for chocolate. <laughs> I don't know. I just, whatever it takes, whatever it takes to save the bear. So I. You're right, you're right, you're right. <laughs> and then he's just walking down Gatlinburg throwing up yeah. all the chocolate that he just ate. Oh, I want that video. Actually, I remember this, though. I know in some places that people uh, would use chocolate as bear bait when they're hunting them, and they've been told they can't do that. That and, like, donuts yeah. because it's dangerous for the bear. It's not mm-hmm. really sporty of you to do that, so... It is. You're you're leaving the bear at a disadvantage because, I mean, again, since we just Google searched, mm-hmm. it could hurt them just like it would a dog. Yep. Let's keep the chocolate away from the bears. Let's do this fair and square. We're going <laughs> to. Bear and square or fair and square? Fair and square. <laughs> Allie, do you know anybody who suffers from boyfriend b- blindness? Boyfriend blindness? I don't yeah. think I've ever heard of this. Well, it makes sense. Boyfriend blindness. If you look it up on TikTok, you probably see a lot of people talking about this. It's uh, a friend. It's when someone is dating a guy who is the worst, but they either don't see the flaws, they're blind oh. to his flaws, or intentionally look past them. Yeah, we've all seen that. We've all experienced those people, unfortunately, that 
And it goes both ways, I will oh, say. It goes both ways. I uh, had a lot of girlfriend blindness when I was growing up. <laughs> Aw, I did. Well, you tend to do that when um, you don't have a lot of options. Whichever one you get. <laughs> and I think that went both ways for all of us back yeah, in the day. Yeah, I think... Uh, just in general, boyfriend girlfriend blindness is unfortunately a real thing. Yeah. How do you how do you cure boyfriend or girlfriend blindness though? Well, you do need to keep your eyes open. I literally heard someone say that last night on a reality TV show. Where, <laughs> That's where <laughs> like, I learned all my lessons. <laughs> no, but literally, like they said, their partner said something kind of sus, mm-hmm. and she, you know, had the eye-opening moment of like, okay, wait a second. If he's saying this now, what is he going to say in the future? Mm. You know. And so, yeah, you do have to keep your eyes open for that type of, you know, red flag, or maybe, you know, we talked about the pink flags earlier, mm-hmm. of like it's. Not quite red, but getting there. So you do need to keep your eyes open for that stuff. Yeah, it's uh, it's tough because you, you don't want to be too suspicious of anybody. Right. But at the same time, um, so we tend to to pull the wool over our own eyes a lot of times just because we don't want to cause any issues in our own relationships. I think for me, what I, my cure was like just going through the relationship or two at first that there was no chance it was going to work mm-hmm. uh to learn those lessons then yeah um and fortunately did before you know the later lessons come along that you or you know before you're ready to actually have the real relationship with somebody that works out right so, and, and mrs hudson is grateful i'm sure yeah i think so <laughs> uh so i don't know but that that feels like it's not a good answer though you just have to have some relationships that suck <laughs> right that's not, you just gotta suffer <laughs> through it <laughs> that's my experience but that is not i don't know if that's great advice to everybody yeah date somebody you actually don't like <laughs> and see all the bad things they do you won't be blind to them date a terrible person yeah no. yeah i know but it's true we all do kind of have to go through some tough relationships sometimes to learn things you know we learn best through mistakes often yeah um so that uh, boyfriend blindness keep your eyes open Allie says <laughs> she learned it from reality tv if you've ever found yourself on clean talk you might have come across a uh, recent trend that involves dumping massive amounts of cleaning products in the tank of your toilet we call that an upper decker in the clean talk community the upper uh, decker <laughs> Uh, it's so that people have been using particularly the cleaning product Fabuloso. Do you have any of that? I do not. I don't either, but I've seen it. It always looks so fun. It almost seems like it would make cleaning fun. Maybe that's why people are dumping it into the top of their toilet. Uh, because then what, you know, the, the proponents of this say that when you flush the toilet, right, then you've got the, the cleaning product that's in the top runs down in to fill the bowl. Yep. It makes it pretty. Pretty colors, uh-huh. and it smells nice, and it clean, and it's a cleaning product, so it must clean the toilet, right? Um, but experts are saying don't do that. Experts are saying this is actually not good for the toilet <laughs> yeah. at all, so definitely don't use it. There are different products that are made for like putting in the toilet upper yeah. part uh, that will clean it, but this is not one of them. This is just like a regular like surface cleaner that people are using Mm -hmm. to put in their toilets because they've seen it on TikTok. But experts are actually saying this can damage your toilet, irritate your eyes and skin, and create excessive waste in your drains, which could cause major, major expenses later on. Yeah. I don't want to go into all the skin irritation stuff because how's that, you know, like (laughs) even happening. But um, I am thinking like if you're flushing this cleaning product down, what they said is that It'll the like the what do they call it the gaskets? Yeah, you know all the rubber seals that are all within your piping. Yeah, for your for your plumbing, um, you don't want those to wear away because then you have leaks. And uh, this is stuff that's not meant to be going through those tubes and whatever. So <laughs> it can get messed up. This, but it's just the worst way we can describe this. Yeah, honestly, because this list is kind of giving me the vibes of like when you're watching television and the pharmacy commercials come on with the new medication and yeah. it's like the list of the, the side, side effects. effects. That's yeah. what this is. It's a list of side effects. Yeah. So just don't, and don't do it. dry mouth also. <laughs> yeah. It's possible if you use Fabuloso in the top and of your And may toilet. cause death. Yeah, just, just don't do it. Just clean your toilet. I know it's no fun the old-fashioned way. That's how it's supposed to be done. Um, I don't think I've ever had so many people send me the same story in such a short amount of time. 
But guys, the McRib is back. The McRib is back. Well, not yet, but it's coming. It's coming back. The McRib is making a comeback. Everyone uh, yesterday wanted to let me know about <laughs> this. So I was like, what do you guys have an alert set up? <laughs> And then after the alert, you there's two alerts. One, when there's news about the McRib, and two, don't if there is news about the McRib, send it to Hudson. We got to alert Hudson. Yeah. Uh, but I'm excited. I do like the McRib. You like the McRib? I've never had it before. This is a trend. This has happened with everybody I've ever hosted this show with. <laughs> I've never had McRib. Had it. And then it's like, well, I guess I'll we'll have to do a food fight with it, even I though just, I've had it numerous times. I just don't eat at McDonald's that often. And so I guess I've never thought about going to get a McRib whenever it has been there, which is not very often. Yeah. Well, we'll have to do it for the show, I suppose. Uh, it returns nationwide on December 3rd, which threw me for a loop because I swear the last time that they had the McRib, they were like, this is the last time we're ever doing this. <laughs> oh, really? And they really tried to sell everybody on that. Mm. Um, and uh, they were lying. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> Maybe I'm just misremembering, but I think that's what happened. But not only are they bringing the McRib back to McDonald's on December 3rd nationwide. Also, for the first time ever, they are going to be sell selling McRib sauce in a half-gallon jug. <laughs> and uh, you'll be But you'll only be able to get that. Online, it seems, at wholeloutofmcribsauce.com <laughs> yeah. starting on November 25th for $20 yeah, that's for a crazy. half gallon. That's uh, that's an insane price. But I'm telling you, that sauce is not that good. I've never had it, obviously, but I don't deny that, that it, that's going to sell out like immediately. Yeah, there's there's no chance, though, that, that it's worth that. We should know better, <laughs> people. Right. Um, but, uh, December 3rd is when it makes its comeback. I, I do like the McRib, but, um, I feel that if I go to McDonald's and I spend more than like $7, I'm doing something wrong. And, uh, the McRib is definitely more than $7. So <laughs> I just don't, I don't typically get it anymore when it comes back. How much does it cost? Too much. Just more than $7? More. I could get like one McRib or I could get like two, a burger and a, and four nuggets and a fry and a drink. And I think stuff. you're vastly under us. <laughs> how expensive McDonald's is It's gone now. too much. I was there last <laughs> night and I was like this, I should have just gone to Wendy's. It's a better deal, I thought. <laughs> yeah. um, but Wendy's doesn't have the McRib. Yeah, they don't. Well. December 3rd, mark your calendars, or really, if you want that McRib sauce, that overpriced half gallon of McRib sauce, uh, November 25th, 10 a.m. Eastern. Don't forget. Set the alarm for that. Yeah. Thanks for listening to The Hudson Show. Please don't forget to rate and review the podcast.